Ladies and gentlemen, this is the vacant WBO International Heavyweight Championship. Please welcome into the ring from Philadelphia, USA, Malik Scott! Just a few weeks ago, up the road in Liverpool, an American came over and dashed the dreams of a British heavyweight. Malik Scott is looking to make lightning strike twice over in the UK. He's unbeaten, largely unknown outside of boxing circles, and they say he simply avoided and the best kept secret among American heavyweights. The word is he's the best of that crop. He's a good boxer too. We know they can fight in Philadelphia. And he is a real danger. He's a live one. A proper live threat to Derek Chisora tonight. Chisora knows it, he's trained for it too. He's his lightest in quite some time, just a pound heavier than when he fought Vitaly Klitschko so memorably back in February of last year. He can't afford any slip-ups against a proper, proper heavyweight boxer. And Chisora is tuned. Importantly, he's in shape physically. More important than that, he seems in a great place mentally. Really looking forward to seeing how that shakes up and unfolds in Chisora's boxing tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, Frank Warren, sponsored by Betfred and Raynham Steel, proudly presents 10 three-minute rounds for the Wacom WBO International Heavyweight Championship live and exclusive on Box Nation from the Wembley Arena here in London. Your officials were appointed by the World Boxing Organization and the British Boxing Board of Control. Your three scoring judges at ringside are Mr. Terry O'Connor of Birmingham, Mr. Howard Foster of Doncaster, and Mr. Dave Paris of Leeds. Your WBO supervisor is John Handler of Hadley Wood. Your British Boxing Board of Control representative is Mick Collier. Your timekeeper at the bell is Bob Edgeworth. And when the action begins, your referee in charge is Phil Edwards of Preston. And now to introduce the contestants. Firstly, fighting out of the red corner. He brings with him a record of 35 wins, one draw, with 12 KOs to his name. At yesterday's weigh-in, he scales 16 stone 8 pounds, and tonight wears the Mauve and Black Shorts. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to London, from Philadelphia, USA, Malik Scott! And across the ring in the blue corner stands a former British champion. His record reads 16 wins, 4 losses with 10 KOs to his name. At yesterday's weigh-in heat scale, 17 stone, 4 pounds. And tonight wears the Union Jack shorts. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting and introducing from Finchley, London, Derek Chisora! Oh, 
Your referee will now give his final instructions to both boxers. Gentlemen, you've had your instructions in the dressing room, you know what I expect from you. Defend yourselves at all times, watch those heads when you're in clothes. Touch clubs, good luck. Ladies and gentlemen, 10 three minute rounds for the vacant WBO International Heavyweight Championship. Well, Malik Scott is unbeaten. Most heavyweights average something like 20 jabs per round. Malik Scott averages nearly 30. He's a slickster, he can box, and he's yet to be beaten. Chisora needs to get on his chin right from the start. It's an intriguing matchup between a fighter in Chisora who's aggressive, front foot, and who's experienced and has the better pedigree with a guy who can box, has talent, and we don't quite know how good he is. Has he been avoided or has he been protected? That's what we find out about Malik Scott tonight. Well, I've, I've watched him a few times, Alex, and he is really skillful. We've just seen he's an orthodox fighter, but he'd come out as a southpaw, just changed back now, but he's mega talented, and he's, he's not worried about the crowd. He's happy just to box behind the jab. As you said yourself, he throws maybe 10 more jabs per round compared to the average heavyweight. Very tall, very accurate. So Derek needs to be where he is now. He needs to start passing to get on his chest, keep dipping those shoulders, keep bending those legs, rolling forward, working hard, making... Scott trying to push him back, trying to punch him back. And we know Chisora can do that. It, first time really in recent years you've seen Vitaly Klitschko so bothered, so troubled, so huffed and puffed. And although David Hay came out on top last summer in that Upton Park extravaganza, he was puffing. He was made to work for every inch of that victory. It's good from Derek. He had to eat a jab on his way in, but he paid Scott back with not two nice body shots. And good uppercut too. Kimball Scott, he places his punches. He don't usually you know, drive him in at times. I don't think either of these heavyweights are massive punches for the heavyweight division. Big right hand though. And Scott just shrugs it off with a smile. Again, this is exactly it. Ch Chisora's in shape to affect this sort of fight. Amazing to think he's nearly 20 pounds lighter than he was the night that caught Tyson Fury. Yeah, it's, it's amazing, isn't it? Let himself down that night, I think, coming in overweight and not as fit as he has been recently, but he's looking sharp tonight. I know Scott likes to fight off the ropes and he fights off the ropes quite well, but that's where Derek wants him, most definitely. And Chisora lets his hands go like he has been when he gets up close. The more so the better that will reflect on the scorecards if Scott's to win he's got to he's got to win clearly oh lovely hook there there's been two of those this round Barry two delicious left hooks to the body from Scott but Scott already with a welt under his right eye Alex don't know whether that was from a punch or a head Ooh, good round good round both had their moments, and Scott just slightly bothered by that right eye. Give me well, the time. template that we expected, the tactics that were anticipated, exactly what happened through the first round. Yeah, that little thing we seen there was, was probably better. There's that left it to the body there. Scott landed with a few times. Really was back and forth running that round. Derek working well when he got Scott on the ropes. Come again with the jab, you understand? Yeah. Keep him busy. It's it's really yeah. sharp work hold. from Scott. That's why you're going to tire him out, yeah? Plenty of work from Chisora, okay. who I fancy want to would have been here. better back. served by a 12-round fight tonight. Okay. This guy's not here. <laughs> yes, yeah, you would have thought so, but, you know, he's going to need the rounds to, to wear no. Scott down, isn't he? But he's had a good start so far. It's a tight first round. They both had the successes. How did you see it? I, I couldn't split him, to be honest. I thought Scott started off well, Derek came back into it, and then Scott finished quite well at the end with a nice little combination. Is he going to be like this every round? 
Well, this is what Derek wants. He wants it close, I guess, then he wants to use his weight, strength, rough Scotter. The fact that Scotter already has a little bit of a swelling under his right eye will be encouraging signs for Derek Tatora. Scott's trying to put a bit more meat into his punches there on the back foot to try and halt this Chisora charge. Amazing to think that Del Boy has actually lost three of his last four and amazingly four of his last six, but those have been at a high level. And you just see that mouse under the right eye of Malik Scott. But Derek just can't switch off. He needs to just keep constantly closing the gap. He, he doesn't want to be. He wants to be in that three-quarter range constantly, all the time on his chest. Keep dipping the legs, moving the head, rolling the shoulders when he's coming forward. For the last month, Chisora has been pumped up by the prospect of this fight. He cannot afford to lose to a guy who's good. And has an excellent record. But largely, many people will say, Who's he? Okay, it's a little bit scrap, isn't it? How many punches landing clean? And Alex Scott actually drew back in February with Vyacheslav Glasgow, the, the unbeaten Ukrainian. Bronze medalist in the Olympics once upon a time. Well, many people feel that he was a bit unlucky not to get the decision that night. Well, he was more than lucky, Alex. I thought he won eight of the ten rounds that night. So he's not quite been able to land any punches this round. It's taken too long as he to get close to, to Scott. So a nice little whipping shots and nice little one twos whipping up the cuts for as Trizol's coming in. He's got the stamina, we know that. He's been 12 rounds on several occasions. Scott has been 10 rounds only three times. It's only really recent years he's been stepping up from six and eight round distances. That, that tells you how his career has progressed or not, as the case is. Yeah, it's been a funny, funny career, hasn't it? But I, for me, I think that was a round for Malik Scott. I think Derek stalled and threatened to do but didn't actually do a lot of work much better round i want punching and moving don't clinch Here, with him and don't Trevor. wrestle with him you hear me Jeez. don't wrestle with him push him around when you got your hands out there he can't do anything right. make him keep starting over and you you showcase yourself all right you hear me don't you get in no clinches and don't wait on them ropes punch with your hands and move punch and move showcase yourself. Yeah, that's all right, all right. Give him, give him a little water. Good job, though. That last round was better. I want more like that. You'll skill the show. Make him look bad. Work hard. He's coming right at you. Well, that's a confident Go corner. Man. He's got an experienced guy on his side as well, Malik Scott. In the shape of Jesse Reed. Who took Lamont Brewster to that win over Vladimir Klitschko some, what, nine years ago. Yeah, he's a colourful character, no, isn't he? Jesse Reed here, very vocal, but talks a lot of sense in there. I think he was right, I think um, Scott Box quite well that, that last round. But Derek, you know, he's going to have to give away some of these rounds, you know, against the sharper box over the longer reach. But just putting pressure and tiring him out, making Scott work all the time. And he's hoping that he's going to come into the fight in the second half. Well, that's it. These early exchanges are going to be more difficult while Scott is fresh and able to use his skills. He's always going to rely on that engine and fitness, focus, strength. A sort of flashy combination there from Scott, not, not much weight behind it though. And he spins off the rope but very well, doesn't he? He's better from Derek, you know, he's not throwing any punches, but he's not being a target for Scott to, to let those combinations, those flurries go. Just moving his head, you know, changing the angle of attack. Scott turned pro when he was 21 years old back in 2000. He did have a, a 
a bit of a hiatus. Three and a half years out with the bicep injury between 2008 and 2012. Not lost any of the sharpness of skills, though. You know, nice little one two there from Derek, though, with Malik on the ropes. And he sits on the ropes well, does Malik Scott, and he, ev he evades punches quite well. But because Chisora's a looping puncher, it's hard to slip those shots sometimes. Chisora's not landed a thing hardly this round so far. Scott is tying up Chisora in those clinches as well. And they were hurling insults at each other in the build up to this. Every time you come up against a decent fighter, you get beat, said Scott. Chisora's answer could be, you haven't fought a decent fight yet. Absolutely right, that was the response. <laughs> and certainly a noisy, eye-catching left hand from Chisora. Well, it, was a, it was a landing shot, but it was an open glove. I think that's why it made the noise. It just a little bit of a slap, wasn't it? Just the sense at the end of this round that Scott is trying to wind his punches up a little. and. We're traveling further, and sometimes that happens when a fighter gets tired. We keep an eye on that. I think Scott took that too. Yeah, I've got that for Scott. I think he boxed quite well again. We we'll tied Derek up when he got in close. Derek needs to bully him a little bit more. I want you pushing him around and quit laying on the ropes. You're giving him the fight that way. You hear me? You got to stay in the middle of the ring, keep your body down, start picking him up with shots and shooting over the top. I want quick combinations and moving and showcase your shots. Now you see some of those quick combinations finishing on the uppercut from Scott. They didn't really land. Oh, they go hold in. Uh, Derek still got through with the uppercut, to be fair. But yeah, he whips some uppercuts in, doesn't he, here, Scott? He sort of throws nice one, two straight shots and whips them in. How much Boy, power, but they're accurate. Yeah. All right. Corners, 10 seconds. In. Come on, baby. Seconds out, round four. Don Charles in the Chisora corner. They know each other so well, imploring Chisora to make a big effort. Come on, Derek, from the rafters. He's trying, he's up against the slick, slick guy. Yeah, Scott just changed direction, is not he? Just when Derek's following him round rather than cutting the ring off, he just changed direction. As ever, Scott's going to have to do enough to persuade the judges that he is doing enough. And the second half of the fight could be very, very interesting. Better from Chisora. Scott just laughs it off, but bodywork from Chisora. Crowd getting into it now. Chisora just took a little hook there, coming in off Scott. Scott. Good defense from Chisora, dicking under those swinging punches. He takes a shot well as well, doesn't he? So he's not too worried about having to take Malik's hooks. Now there's plenty of money for Scott, apparently all week with the bookies. Some of it apparently to win by stoppage, which seems an extraordinary punt given Chisora's chin. <laughs> and his knockout ratio as well. Yeah, it seems really strange. But the money for him to win full stop, not entirely misplaced on what we've seen so far. He's boxing quite well, but I, like I said, Derek knew he was going to give away these early rounds, I think. A couple of warnings from the referee for Scott. 
He left her to the body, but he had to, Chisora had to take a, a left hook on the chin. I just sense this round, though, that Chisora is starting to make a little bit of an impression. He's making Scott work, and these might just be little building blocks for later in the fight. Yeah, good body shots here from Derek. But he's closing the gap, isn't he, Alex? That's the most important thing. And all those body shots as well. Whether Scott shrugs them off, smiles them away or not, doesn't matter. Just depleting the energy resources in this fight. He's liable to go late on. Good round that for Chisora. Yeah, good. Some more, yeah? Much better. Keep working that body. He's gonna fold, trust me. Bucket, please. He's there, he's there, he's there. Keep your head still. Come on, put your head back. This, it can't work at your pace. Once you're in there, you're stronger than him, yeah? Keep drilling that body, don't worry. You're investing in it. Keep investing, yeah? Good boy. But we need some more jab, yeah? Listen, he don't just walk in, jab your way in or rolling. You're just walking in straight. You mustn't do that, okay? Yes, sir. Yeah, he's doing boy. good. That was a good round. Well we want done. another round like that. Don't switch off, yeah? yeah? We want this, yeah? Slowly breathe. Come we on. We want it and we need it. Well, slowly, good man. Come on, slowly breathe. Do you have enough? Yeah, I'm good. Good. Good boy. I'm going to just give him a couple of jobs now. Okay. Corner. That was a good round. Keep More. Turn it out. Round five. Frank Warren. Trying to urge Chisora forward. Excellent insight into the corner there. Investment was the word from Don Charles. I said little building blocks. That was a better word. Yeah. Investing with the body work. The body work and the pressure, you know, we, you want to make a boxer, a technical boxer, a gifted boxer like Malik, Malik Scott, work hard, tire him out. Ooh, that was good. Very nice from Scott. Quick one two with the uppercut. And again. But the good thing for Derek is, even though he's getting caught with his shots coming in, and another lovely hook uppercut he just got caught with. The second half of the round, at the end of the round, he's working hard and, and then sway maybe the, some of the, these rounds in his favour. could happen that way. And Chisora's the one coming forward. And he's been a frenetic pace, and I'm just saying Chisora will be happier with that. But Scott, got to, he got to keep throwing that jab out, Malik Scott, doesn't he? He's got to keep delicate on the end of the punch. He's got to come at long range. That's better from Dad. I was just about to say he needs more head movement. Scott managing to dance his way out of trouble. Heavily tattooed American. He was a stellar amateur once upon a time as well. He won a bronze at the 1997 Junior Olympics. Well, his professional career hasn't hit the same heights. If he could beat Derek Chisora, suddenly he's launched forward just like Tony Thompson in the twilight of his career. Well, he should have been there already, shouldn't he, really? Not the, not the fights he's had and wins he's had. Time is pressing. It turns 33 in October, Scott. Oh, some good work again there from Scott. And Derek's just not moving his head enough. He needs sharper movements when he's coming forward. Just overreaching there with that right hand over the top. He's had fun, a minute the fifth. We're already at halfway, can you believe? The movement from Chisora, good footwork. Scott's done well to tie Chizuru up when they've got close. Yeah, he has, hasn't he? That's it from Chizuru, much better. Good energy. The problem with it is the good, the good movements and the good tactics, but that takes a lot out of you. That's the only reason why he's not doing that all the time. But dipping the shoulders and his sharp movements, that, that's probably a better tactic for Derek. But another round there for me for Malik Scott. Yeah, it was a, a good finish from Chisora, but a little too little too late. And just a quick anyway? glance down the 
Good. In running betting and don't give this of gold. Off. You're giving him too much space that time. Malik scored yeah. as an yeah. odds-on favourite, trading around about four to six as we speak. She's around there. about six we'll to five. You're still not jabbing enough. So the bookies yeah. think, oh, oh, no, no, no. like yeah. Barry Jones, Scott's in front. You've got to keep clear by two rounds, Barry. Yes, I have at the moment. Yes. You've got to stay in the middle of the ring and keep him working. Keep him working with your hands. Can't you turn him again? As we said, it's all an investment. This is where you take over. Take over. Corner. Just hit him back on his heels there, didn't he, with the uppercut, Scott? Second belt. Wow. Oh, if this guy, if this guy could punch. That'd be sharp. Fast punches, and then the movement away. The dance out of reach as well. Jesse Reed saying, "This is where you take over." To Malik Scott, and most of us are thinking, hoping it's the other way around. Pressure from Chisorans. Scott just leaning back on those ropes and then tying his man up. Good work there from Derek. And the crowd rolling Chisora forward, and there's some taunting from Scott. I won't repeat that, but I think he was suggesting that Chisora's not punching very hard. Well, he cuts with the shots, isn't he, a lot, Derek? He, you know, the other clubs already cuts with them, so some of them don't don't carry a lot of weight, some of them do. And even though Scott's holding there, I think Derek's just smothering his work slightly, isn't he? Just needs to take a half a step back. Not so much, though, from Scott in this round. He's been landing those eye-catching punches. And even though those are on the sort of shoulder and whatnot, Chisora's trying to make an impression. He's enjoying himself a bit more again here. Yeah, from the back of the, the arena, though, that right hand looked like it landed, didn't it? Just caught Malik Scott on the shoulder. Chisora looking to throw that straight jab to the body just to get himself into range. It's the constant pressure, though, that has really just made Scott just slow down a little bit, hasn't it? Inside the final minute, Chisora's probably on top so far. And this fight is just swung and fro through each round. He's a little flurry now, doesn't he, Derek Chisora? Quite cute, Scott, isn't he? He just sort of angles his body away, so he never really takes one clean. Down on the ropes, he's gone down. Scott, he's gone down, he takes a count. He looks to his corner, Frank Warren's on his feet in the far side. Son Francis, is he getting up? He's counted out! What has he done? He's mistaken the count, and Malik Scott counted out. In a fight, he was probably winning. Well, a bizarre end, wasn't it? He won the heavy knockdown. It seemed like he was taking the count, wanted to get up at eight, left it too, too late, and the referee had no choice but to stop it. But it was a, a disappointing end, because it was just warming up, wasn't it? It certainly was. It's not Zach Malik's got, it's got his faculties. He knows exactly where he was, is. And the truth is, he was probably Cleared on the cards by a couple of rounds. We'll have to see the tape again. But where the count was and, <laughs> and where his knee was, but he stayed down for an awful long time for a fight who seemed to be okay. Yeah, well, he's well, he, well, he done the right thing. You stay, you stay down till eight. You know, you make the most, you no, know, you make the much uh, the rest as you possibly can. But he obviously mistimed it terribly and. No, the referee comes to ten, you've got no choice, have you, to, 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 to wave it off, whether you're hurt or not. But a shame, because that was really, really warming up into a cracking little contest. Real shame. That was brewing up nicely, and you, you sensed those last three or so rounds. We're going to 
going to be nip and tuck. And the story was still to avoid. And it was a big right hand over the top. Yeah, I don't think he was megally hurt or anything. Like he wasn't seriously hurt. Caught him, you know, I think he just disorientated him slightly. Done the right thing, he wasn't hurt, you can see him smiling, he's fine, he's, you know, he's, he's aware of what's happening. If anything, he might have just lost his balance, but I don't think that shot landed really clean. But anyway, he took the count, he took the count fine. Smiled initially when he managed to gather himself. There's no doubt that right hand did sort of land almost on the top of the head of the year. He seemed to lose his left leg four. I don't honestly think Five, six, seven. Eight is the count. Nine. Well, Ooh. nine and a bit. Nine and a half to ten. It's a close call, isn't it? The thing is, you just don't give the referee that opportunity. Well,